In the United States, about 550,000 people experience homelessness on a given night. In one of the wealthiest nations in the world, we have an extreme housing problem. Even if people are properly housed, the average cost of living keeps increasing. So how does a nation with incredible wealth, land, and natural resources, and income have such a problem with reasonable housing? The answer is simple. Government. First, we need to look at a great example of reasonably priced housing with access to the nation's third largest metro area, Chicago. Go on any real estate website and you will see a plethora of affordable housing units with direct train access to downtown. Of course, these may not be mega mansions with huge plots of land, but that's the point. The average person only needs a kitchen, living space, and one bedroom. With access to food, water, internet, and housing, the average person can have a higher quality of life than the majority of humans throughout the developing world. In time, as a person gains more wealth, it may be reasonable for them to desire a larger space with access to a car, but it is not forced upon them in much of Chicago. So why is housing so cheap in the Windy City? The answer is simple, supply and demand. Chicago sits on a massive, flat, resource-rich area which makes building places to live relatively cheap and easy. But here's the most important part. Chicago has an excellent zoning policy compared to the average American city. In Chicago, it is legal to build multi-story, multi-family buildings like these in much of the city. That may not seem like a big factor to any European listener, but most U.S. cities have made it illegal to build these structures and instead force developers to only build detached single-family homes. When you legislate a suburban house, you force people to use more land and take up more space which means if demand increases even slightly, you quickly run out of land to build upon. Put simply, the government has allowed Chicago to meet its housing demand by letting people build more densely and the price of a one-bedroom reflects that. If you look around Chicago, you'll often see vacant lots of land that are zoned for residential housing. This is actually a good thing. This means that no one has wanted to build on that property in Chicago's lifetime. Supply has met demand, and everyone that wants to move to Chicago already has. And by the way, this results in neighborhoods that are lively, walkable, affordable, and not necessarily car dependent, which also contributes significantly to affordability because the major metric is housing plus transportation. Now, that's not to say the government should force you to build a townhome or a multifamily building. If you want to build a single-family home and you have the means, then you should be able to. But later on, if land values increase and demand for housing skyrockets, you should be able to redevelop your land into a duplex, triplex, or an apartment building. Basically, you let the market and individuals do the work of fixing supply and demand. Let's contrast this with one of the most expensive places to live in the United States, the California Bay Area. The first problem is geography. The west coast of California is mountainous, which makes building very difficult and less economical. So people naturally migrated to the places that are more flat and open, namely San Francisco and Oakland. This alone will slightly increase the cost of housing, but the true problem arises because of the government. If you walk around San Francisco, you will see a plethora of two-story single-family houses. Sure, they are townhome style, meaning they interface with the adjoining property, but with the insanely high demand for housing, it should be in the developer's best interest to replace two-story buildings with larger apartment blocks. This is exactly what happened in New York. People built up. But much of San Fran is zoned only for single-family housing, meaning it is literally illegal to increase the housing supply, even though so many people would benefit from it. San Fran, in all honesty, should look like New York at this point. 
But even when the city does rezone land for more dense development, strong neighborhood opposition often arises. The counter-argument is always along the lines of, it would ruin the character of the neighborhood. <sighs> Our fellow brothers and sisters are living in tents under bridges and squalor, and the NIMBY's problem is about aesthetic. I think one of the contributing factors in this problem is a vicious pricing cycle. Because housing is relatively scarce, the prices keep going up. Since the prices keep going up, people have to get longer loans like 30-year mortgages to be able to pay for it. If it takes you 30 years to finish paying off a damn house, you are incentivized to keep the neighborhood the same. You don't want to jeopardize your precious investment, and in some sense you are stuck in that house. Of course people get grumpy around change. Their entire life is centered around this piece of land. Imagine instead if housing was cheap enough that we could pay it off in only four years. If a neighbor moves in and starts building something we don't like, moving isn't such an overwhelming obstacle. And perhaps there would be less resistance to increasing the housing supply. Americans treat houses like investments, and they can be if you rent them out or flip them to sell a profit. But if your intent is to buy it and only live in it, housing is a pretty terrible investment. You'll make a lot more money in the S&P 500 index than real estate, especially when you consider the cost of maintenance, property tax, upgrades, and real estate agent fees when you actually do sell. The only reason real estate has become profitable for the average American who doesn't rent out or flip houses is because the government has severely restricted land rights. Essentially, the value of the land increases faster than the declining value of the home. To wrap up my point, I implore you to look up a company called Boxable. They are a US startup that is trying to build homes in a factory that unfolds upon arrival. They are small, but have everything someone needs to live. The cost of this home is only $49,500. That's right, a modern, efficient, everything you need home only costs 50 grand. If you purchased this on a 30-year mortgage, the monthly payment would only be $250. And guess what? It's illegal to put this on most plots of land in America because of restrictive zoning laws put in place by governments and HOAs. Generally speaking, technology should decrease the cost of goods over time, and this is certainly possible with housing. But when municipalities prevent such progress from thriving, it costs us all, especially those without a place to live. I'm not saying that all of the homeless problem is caused by government, but you will never solve homelessness through public funding alone. The entire system is designed to benefit the people with homes at the expense of those that do not.